Hey everyone, um, so this video is to walk you guys through your third essay assignment. Um, and in this unit you guys read a, a number of works from Transcendentalist authors. Um, so we're going to be thinking about how particular theme, genre, or idea related to Transcendentalism is portrayed by a single work and author in this unit. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to choose a single work and author. So for example, you could choose Emerson, you could choose one of his texts, you could choose Thoreau, you could choose one of Whitman's poems, um, and you're going to explain or explore how an overarching theme genre or idea from transcendentalism is portrayed through that author. So think about, for example, how Emerson is portraying particular ideals of transcendentalism. So is he looking at um, the, the, the inherent right of the intellectual or the um, right of the individual? Um, is he looking at anti-urbanization, anti-industrialization? Um, so think about how the work is portraying these particular transcendental ideals. Um, and then you're going to look at specifically how the movement and the author and the work that you're talking about fit into or impact the larger historical situation. So, for example, when you're reading Emerson, you know that Emerson is vital in creating transcendentalism. That's very important. Someone like Whitman um, helped create a, a focus on the natural um, and it heavily influenced um, uh, sort of that, that nature-centric poetry that became in vogue at the time. Um, someone like Frederick Douglass is portraying particular truths or realities of uh, the time period um, as someone with his, his background. So you have to be thinking about how that work is really portraying or influencing the larger historical uh, situation. Um, so here's where things get a little bit different. You guys can do this essay in one of three ways. Um, you can do a traditional three to four page essay. Um, if you're comfortable with that, go ahead and do the normal essay. Um, you can also do a 10 minute video lecture if you choose. Um, you could do this uh, as a video that you upload to YouTube and then you'll just enter a link for me on your submission and I will go and view that. Um, you could also do this if you choose instead as a sort of presentation style um, submission. You could do a PowerPoint or a Prezi with a bibliography. So um, the reason for this is that a lot of people work in a lot of different ways. So I want you guys to be able to present the information or the argument that you want to make in the way that's most comfortable for you. Um, so all of this still centers around the same structure, the same requirements, the same argumentation. It's just being delivered in a different format. So um, like I said, if you're comfortable with writing the essay, go ahead and do that. If, you would, if you're more comfortable speaking, um, then I would suggest doing the video lecture. Um, if you are more comfortable with sort of a presentation format with more bullets and um, images and enhancements like that, then, then please go ahead and do the, the PowerPoint or the Prezi. Um, no matter what you choose, do note that you still have to have a bibliography submitted, so you'll still submit. If you do uh, something other than the essay, you'll still submit as a separate document the bibliography as well. Um, if you choose to do the video lecture when you submit, um, you need to make sure that the YouTube link is working and is public. So when you go in to submit it, just like you can see your essay, you'll see be able to see the submission link. Um, please click on it and go and make sure that it is open and that it is public for viewing because if, I, if, you, if that's not possible or you can't see it, then I can't see it. So if it's broken, there's no time for us to turn around and fix it before grades are due. So please make sure that works. The same thing for the PowerPoint or the Prezi link. Um, you'll do the Prezi with the same way as you would the video lecture with the link. If you do a PowerPoint, um, you'll be able to see the PowerPoint just like you do the, the essay after you submitted it. So if it doesn't work or you can't see it, resubmit. You can resubmit as many times as is needed up until the deadline. Um, so your choices for authors in this one are Emerson, Thoreau, Whitman, Dickinson, or Douglas, depending on what you chose to read between Whitman and Dickinson. Um, again, I... I say one work, an author. Um, you are welcome to choose a couple of poems if you choose to do a, a, an author who did poetry. Um, I wouldn't do more than two, though, because we need to keep the argument nice and focused and detailed. Um, but the choice of works is up to you. So 
you are required to use two sources to support your argument. So these can be scholarly or non-scholarly sources. If you choose a non-scholarly source, it's totally fine. You just need to make sure that you have a credible source like history.com, PBS, etc. Um, so again, everything is very broad. It's choice of topic and literary work is yours, so choose carefully. Um, make sure that you're talking about something that is not only of interest to you, but something that you really can pull a lot of good information in on. Um, the essay is due on Sunday, March 3rd at midnight. Your bibliography and any anything that you write um, does require standard MLA. And remember that everything is checked for safe assign, uh, through safe assign for plagiarism. Um, so you will need to make sure that you have all of these these elements, no matter which format you work in, you still need to have a fully developed essay structure. So you still need to have an intro with an argumentative thesis statement about the text. Um, you still need to have careful close analysis of the work and its major concepts. Again, remember that you are keeping the focus on the text here by looking at it as a literary analysis. So you should be analyzing things like characterization, motivation, uh, conflict, um, similes, metaphors, etc. You should look at all of these specific literary elements. Um, look, Make sure you have good, solid evidence from both your primary and your secondary sources. So if you're doing a video lecture, I still expect you to have quotes from sources. Same thing with the PowerPoint or Prezi. I still expect to see those quotes with citation. Um, if you're not sure how to do this in a video lecture, look at how I pull in quotes from um, lectures that I give to you guys, that's how you would do it. You still introduce your sources and pull in their quotes, but you're doing it in a verbal format. Um, you need to make sure that you have proper page length or, or whatever the length is requirement of the format that you're doing. MLA for anything that's written, and then proper number of uses of sources and citations. Same thing. You'll still need to cite um, in text if you're doing a Prezi or a PowerPoint. Um, and then make sure you have that fully developed essay structure. So you need an intro with a thesis, clear main ideas with lots of evidence, and a conclusion. And everything does need to be careful and clearly organized. So um, just to do a note here on the PowerPoint or Prezi, um, don't, don't, uh, rely too much on something like bullets. You want to make sure that you're trying to still get the same amount of information across. It's just a different format than the than an essay. So I do expect to see more than just a few words or just a few lines of bullets on every page. You're still responsible for conveying all the information to your audience just in a way that is maybe enhanced with some other elements like imagery or graphs or charts or, or whatever it might be. Um, the same thing on the video lecture, make sure that you plan it out. Don't just do it off the cuff if you do that. Um, it's very easy for the time to go by much quicker than you expect um, when you're doing video lectures. So make sure you have your notes in front of you, make sure you're prepared and you have some type of outline of what you want to say as well. Um, so this should all be pretty clear. Again, choose the format that is of most interest to you and that you feel most comfortable in. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, I really think you guys are going to do a great job. Um, and remember also that there is no final exam in this class. So once you finish this paper, you're actually finished with the course. Um, there is an extra credit opportunity that is available to you that is due by the Tuesday night at midnight of um, finals week. But otherwise, if you choose not to do that, then this is your final assignment for the course. So. Please do let me know if you have any questions, but otherwise, best of luck to you guys.